$1,103. That is how much I pay and millions of other people pay per year for the Adobe Creative Cloud. But with the changes released from Affinity today, I think the dam has finally burst and this could be the most monumental shift I've ever seen in the creative industry. Because right now you can download Affinity Photo 100% for free, no strings attached, and it fully could replace Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. It's nearly identical in their functionalities and includes AI tools if that's something that matters to you. The only caveat to that is that you do need a Canva Pro subscription for any of the AI tools within Affinity Photo, but Canva Pro is about $150 per year, which is like 10 times less than I currently pay for Adobe software. Now, the reason that this is such a big deal to me and why I'm making a video about this right now is the fact that I've been using Photoshop for over 10 years. I've been using Adobe software almost daily throughout that entire time in my creative work as a video editor, a camera assistant, a photo retoucher, and a photographer. But I've never felt that there was another software or a suite of tools that actually competed to Adobe in any reasonable way. But I truly think that the walled garden that Adobe once had is really starting to diminish, and I'll leave the decision up to you whether you think Affinity could actually replace Photoshop for you. Now one thing that has been a huge gripe of mine with Adobe software is that I'm constantly going from one app to another and I'm opening one thing closing another and it's just kind of a pain but here in affinity photo we can edit our vectors so like any graphic design work and edit our images or even bring a vector into an image based project all in one single place because we have these different workspaces so we have a vector workspace where we can create our shapes and they're all going to be vector assets for example if i just create this circle here if i zoom in you'll be able to see how sharp that edge is because we have that vectorized asset but what's really interesting is we can just convert anything that's raster into vector right on the canvas here because we have the two viewing modes. We have the vector and then the pixel view mode or the raster view mode. So that way you can preview your vector files in a raster format right here on the canvas with one click of a button. We then have some other workspaces that basically all just change up the tools that we have available to us depending on what type of work that we're wanting to do. The AI section is something really interesting that I'll come back to in a minute, but for like photo editing and stuff like that we have a retouching workspace so we can remove blemishes and remove distractions and things like that and we have some color grading workspaces and things like that basically all the essential tools that you would expect from a program so I'm not going to get too into that one thing that is fun though is we can go to the three dots and we can create our own studios which will allow us to add all of our own tools and the things that we use the most within an affinity photo we can just place them all into one single workspace now Photoshop does already kind of have this stuff with their workspace presets, but I think this just kind of simplifies it to a degree. Now, as someone who has been using Photoshop primarily for the last 10 years, I was wondering, well, could I use my Photoshop projects inside of Affinity Photo? And the answer is actually yes, because this here is a thumbnail that is for a video that's gonna be coming out next week. And I was wondering, could I actually go through and edit all of these assets? For the most part, every asset looks exactly the same as it did in Photoshop with a few exceptions. There was supposed to be an outline around the background images that didn't show up and some of these shapes are missized. But that's what's so crazy about this is that even though it is a little bit off, it's so easy to edit it. And the shortcuts and all the functionality is basically the same as Photoshop. Like I'm using the same keyboard shortcuts. I'm using the same kind of tools that I would expect to use in Photoshop, maybe with some slight changes, but overall it's so easy to adapt to, at least from the first glances here since it just released this morning. For example, I can just use the move tool as I would in Photoshop just to scale this shape or adjust its size, whatever I want to do. And it's just like the layer-based workflow that we would have inside of Photoshop. As for those images in the background where I mentioned that there was an outline that's missing, it seems that we have the same like layer styles panel that we would have inside of Photoshop. So we have the outline option where we can go and change that like so. So it actually did add the outline to this photo in this case, it was just too small to notice on the original canvas here. But all of this stuff is like so, so intuitive for myself who has again been using Photoshop 
for a long time. So some of these skills just transfer over really easily. If you have some comfort in Photoshop already, I would highly recommend just experimenting with this stuff for yourself to see specifically how it could work in your world. Now, if you're a beginner to these kinds of softwares and you're new to like layer masks and non-destructive editing and that kind of thing, this little change that I noticed kind of blew my mind that this doesn't already exist in Adobe because for example, here I have like this little spec on the side of this thumbnail portrait of myself. Yeah, it's cringe, whatever, but I wanted to just delete this little piece here. For a beginner, you'd be like, okay, I just want to grab my eraser tool. So you maybe find that eraser tool somewhere in the toolbar here, and then you would go and erase that little pixel. But what's crazy about this is that this program doesn't let you just erase that thing. It tells you in the corner, hey, you actually want to use a layer mask instead. So we just went and added that mask for you. So then on this image layer, or yeah, this group right here, we have a mask that was applied even though we didn't have a mask in the first place. We were using the eraser and it automatically did that to improve our workflow and make it non-destructive. This is just one of, I'm sure, many examples that I have yet to discover, but that alone is just so useful for people who are learning the program and getting used to layer-based editing. Now, as for some of the AI features, I wanted to go and test some of this stuff out as well. So I went to the Canva AI. I have Canva Pro, so that is how I have access to these AI features. But again, the rest of the software is totally free. This is completely optional. But anyways, there is a few interesting takeaways here as well. The first being is that I found the selection process a little bit more intuitive because inside of this workspace, I would just click on the generative fill option here and I don't have to do any extra tool selections or stuff like like that, like we have to in Photoshop, which can be confusing. Instead, we can just go and click anywhere on this canvas. I don't have any specific tool selected, just the generative fill tool. It creates that selection and I would be able to go and type in my prompt here. Now, for the sake of example, let's say I just wanted to remove this pelican in the back of the photo. I could just select that and I would click on apply and then it would take a moment to generate or we could go and add in our prompt as we would usually expect. But when I did this before recording this video, I had a couple interesting things that I thought were kind of funny. So the first one was I usually can just leave the prompt empty inside of Adobe software and it will just replace the object inside of the selection. In this case, it just kind of remade a new pelican, but that is what it is. So I typed in, maybe I need to say remove the bird. So I did that instead and maybe it took it a bit too literally it added a hatchet and someone grabbing the bird. So that was maybe a little too on the nose, but I'll give the Affinity software a break since it just released today. So as of now, from my first little looks, the generative fill maybe doesn't work as well as in Adobe software, but I'm sure it will come with time. Now there are some additional AI tools here that I'll show you from my laptop instead because they require a Apple Silicon computer, which in this case, I am just running on Intel for my desktop. But there are things like 3D portrait lighting tools. There is super resolution, so you can upscale your graphics. There are portrait blurring tools and all these extra little things that are only just being tested in some of the beta software that Adobe has. And none of it is really available inside of the main Photoshop workspace for the most part. And the fact that all of this is just inside of Affinity Photo for free, just crazy to me. Now, I'm definitely going to be diving more into Affinity Photo just for myself to better understand what the heck is going on here and what, how it actually compares one to one to Photoshop, because at first glance, it is pretty damning how good Affinity Photo is, especially considering it's basically free. But I would love to know your opinions on this. Do you think this is something that's going to replace Photoshop or your entire Creative Cloud subscription as a whole? Why or why not? Let me know down below. I'd love to get a few different opinions based on everyone's experiences in their own creative work. Anyways, if you made it this far in the video and you haven't hit the subscribe or like button, that's almost as much of a crime of Adobe charging me $1,100 per year for their software. So if you could do me a solid and hit those two buttons down below, it's totally free. I would appreciate it. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one.